Why am I literally the shiniest person on the planet? <laughs> Okay, now that I'm mattified, hello my darlings, and now we have the brightest sunshine in the world. <sighs> hello my darlings, and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be doing a Q&A. I've not done one of these in... I think it's literally been a couple of years since I last did a Q&A, but I popped a story up on my Instagram literally an hour ago, so hopefully you guys have got some questions. I thought it'd just be nice to have a bit of a catch up. It's coming into spring, it feels like a new, a new year is beginning. For me the new year is more spring than the 31st of December, 1st of January, because it just feels like you know, the flowers start to come out. I feel like I come alive at this time of year. I honestly feel like I've spent the last three or four months hibernating. I'm such a spring summer person. Um, the sunlight literally charges me up, brings me back to life. So yeah, I thought now would be a really nice time to do a little catch up. I've not even looked through these questions yet. I'm just gonna pick them out at random um, and we can have a little catch up. Darling, super quickly, if you're new to my channel, <laughs> then I'd love it if you hit the subscribe button. If you enjoy these more kind of personal chatty videos, then do give this video a thumbs up. Usually I would do a fashion video on Sundays and then lifestyle kind of vlogs on Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> okay, the first question that I've seen is, what was the best thing you ate when you went to America with Freddie? Um, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, probably Shake Shack. <laughs> I just love Shake Shack so much, but um, actually somewhere that really took me by surprise was a restaurant called Central in um, Montgomery, Alabama, and it was all locally sourced produce, fresh fresh local ingredients, and that was probably the best cooking, like the most talented um, chefs and the best kind of cuisine. But then actually, do you know what? When we had that rooftop dinner at the Dubry Hotel in Charleston, the food there was amazing, really, really delicious. We only intended on having a few light snacks as like a pre, pre-dinner snacks um, with our drinks, and they were super tasty as well. But I have actually done blog posts on all of the destinations that we visited in America, um, so I'll leave those linked down below if you want to check those out. The next question is, how is the small hedge doing that you planted to divide your garden? The one that died after planting? Yes, it did. Um, luckily, the landscape company that we use, they were very happy to replace that hedge completely when it did die. So basically in our garden we have got a yew hedge which we've actually just taken four bushes out of as part of our kitchen garden um, renovation. So definitely check out the kitchen garden highlight on my Instagram to see the progress there. So we don't really 100% know why it completely died. It could be because there were a lot of holdups at that time. I think it was a canal um, or you know like a sea passageway was blocked off, meaning that a lot of ships were paused and their shipments were delayed. So maybe um, these yew hedges, yew trees were left out of water for too long and they ended up dying. But the new hedge, not a single one has died, which is amazing. But yeah, we have taken four out to make room for the pathway, which is really exciting. You'll be able to catch up on that in the upcoming vlog on Thursday. I'm giving you a big kitchen garden update. So I would definitely recommend watching that if you're intrigued to see what we're doing down in the kitchen garden. My goodness, this question makes me feel awful. What investment tools do you use to protect yourself from inflation? We actually, I have to say, <laughs> sorting out my finances is actually not something that I'm very on top of. Something that my dad always believed in was investing in property. And I guess I've inherited that from him. And so I'm very proud to say that as a 30 year old woman, I'm an owner of four properties. So that is really where my investments are. Obviously the biggest investment is <laughs> this house right here, but we do have three additional properties um, and they are my investments, I guess you could say. So many questions about wedding planning. I know that I've not been <laughs> keeping you guys updated very much. I wasn't sure whether to tell you this um, because I wasn't sure if anyone would really be interested in the these kinds of details, but um, this is a very honest Q&A, so I'll let you know now. We actually planned on getting, well, we originally planned on getting married in 2020, <laughs> but then COVID happened and buying this house happened and we also had a bit of a disaster with one of the venues that we fell in love with. Long story short, we found out that it was due to get demolished. <laughs> Not ideal. 
Um, then we originally planned on getting married this summer, but then when we started to put everything in place, we realized that we weren't gonna be able to have the wedding that we wanted. There were two major reasons behind this. Firstly, our garden renovation, um, the greenhouse, it sounds really pathetic to postpone your wedding because of a greenhouse, but um, yes, <laughs> major spoiler alert, the wedding is gonna be in our garden. I mean, we just love our house so much. We literally come out of our kitchen door, we look to the right and we see the church. It just seems so perfect. Let me tell you, however, getting married in your own home, I thought would be a good thing for our budget <laughs> when it comes to not having to get a venue. That is not true. <laughs> Marquees, renting tables, renting chairs, it is as expensive, if not more expensive, <laughs> than getting married in a venue. Um, but yeah, because of the kitchen garden plans and the greenhouse not being ready until, it won't be ready until this July, I just didn't want the garden to be in an imperfect state during the wedding. But secondly, and more importantly, we couldn't actually get the marquee that we wanted this year. Um, I think so many people postponed their weddings over lockdown and over covid to get married this year i think summer of 2022 is the busiest wedding year of all time so yeah we are getting married next summer oh my goodness we'll finally get there i think it might be the longest engagement in the world um but it doesn't really bother us a lot of my friends that have got married and i say to them what would you change if anything what are your main kind of feelings now looking back so many of my friends say to me josie i don't know why we rushed into it you're married forever. I don't know, you guys can let me know your opinions down below, but I feel like people get engaged and they get married. For me, getting engaged, getting a house with someone, having two dogs with someone, that is such a sign of commitment. Um, that getting married is not the be all and end all. You know, Charlie and I have invested hugely in this property, hugely in the renovations, um, in the garden renovations, and a wedding is a really expensive thing as well. So it's something that we didn't want to rush anyway. Long story short, we are gonna be getting married next summer. <laughs> um, and yes, I will be sharing loads and loads of the process with you guys. So stay tuned because a lot of the things are going to be being decided over the next, actually over the next few weeks is a really big time for our wedding decision making. So let me know if you would like um, lots of vlogs on things like that. We've got a meeting with the marquee company in two days time. So maybe I'll vlog that. Um, yeah, let me know how much of that you'd like to see down below. Interesting question. What is your favorite time of day and why? Okay, honestly, my favorite time of day is actually, I would say between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. My dream day is getting up at half five, doing a very quick skincare routine, going downstairs, having a glass of water, and it's those hours in the day when the world is a little bit sleepy, not everyone is awake, it kind of feels like you're getting ahead of the day. It feels like you're giving yourself a bit of a head start. I love the calmness, I love the stillness, especially on a blue sky morning in spring and summer. It just feels as though you have the world to yourself at that time, your emails aren't going off, you can hear the birds twittering, so yeah, that's my favourite time of day. Do you get tired of travelling? Do you burn out? Really depends on the type of travel. If you ask me that after our January Maldives trip, I would say no, I love travelling so much and I do. I absolutely adore seeing new places in the world. I absolutely love discovering new things. That's why the Alabama section of our US trip really intrigued me because if I'm totally honest, it's not somewhere that I would have necessarily chosen to go on holiday by myself. We went with the US tourist board and Alabama was a state that they were promoting and I'm just really fascinated. I love learning new things. I love broadening my horizons quite literally and I love experiencing new places. So yes, I love traveling. However, a lot of the time, Charlie and I and <laughs> Freddie and I travel for work. So it's a lot more exhausting than you see. And I know other influencers and content creators will know this. We obviously show a small section of the trip, which is the highlights, the best bit, but behind the scenes, you know, we don't have an out of office the usual work that we're doing every single day is still going on, but then you're also doing these amazing experiences. So traveling, creating content, it's very intense. You know, there's a lot of work to be done. No downtime whatsoever. Free time does not exist when you're traveling for work, but I'm so grateful to be able to do it. And I hope to do a lot more 
this year. <laughs> what is your favourite lipstick? I have a few. The three that spring to mind are the Bare Minerals, here we go, Mineralist lipsticks. I'm wearing this one right now. I love the shades Insight and the shade Grace. With Bare Minerals, obviously the products are mineral based, so you know you're not putting any nasty ingredients on your skin, which I think is really, really important, especially on your lips. You don't want to be ingesting a load of nasty ingredients. So this is pretty much my everyday lipstick. It has overtaken from Tom Ford Sable Smoke because that has sadly been discontinued. Sorry about the lighting, the sun's just gone in. My next favorite are the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra, I think they're called the HH Balms. This is actually number three. Numbers one, two, and three are my favorites. Number two is my ultimate favorite. And they are a balmy lipstick, super balmy, super hydrating, but you get the most gorgeous colour payoff. Um, so I always, always, always have one of these in my handbag. I really like to layer them over other lipsticks, including the Bare Minerals Mineralist as well, because they just make it so comfortable on your skin. And then I would say my third favourite is probably the Code 8 lipstick in the shade Lapisine. Again, it's a really balmy lipstick that goes in my handbag. You can just apply it without a mirror, really beautiful petal pink colour. I need to buy myself a new one, because I've only got one on the go at the moment. I like to have a few of my favourite lipsticks dotted around. When did you move into your house and did you furnish everything yourself? Themselves. Guys, I would highly recommend, if you are fairly new to the channel, watching my early moving vlogs. I will leave the first three linked down below. We moved in April 2020 in the middle of the first very intense lockdown, um, so it was a really emotional time, but I documented everything and they are my favourite videos of mine to go back and re-watch. So if you haven't seen them, if you're new to the channel since we moved, um, it might be quite fun for you to go back and see how the house looked when we moved in. I also shared a video a couple of years ago, um, or like 18 months ago, about the history of the house, so that would be a really fun one to watch as well. Another question, I'm new, how do you actually know Freddie? So Freddie and I have known each other for about five or six years, I think we very first met probably at, we, we can't remember exactly which one, um, but probably at a beauty event through work. We're both uh, content creators. I think in this industry, you often see a lot of the same faces or pre-COVID, you definitely did. You'd see a lot of the same faces at lots of different events beauty launches, press days and things like that, overnight stays, and Freddie and I just instantly clicked. We have the exact same sense of humour, we're very similar in our style, we love a lot of the same things, and yet we have enough differences that we just have such a good laugh together. She's a cat person, for example, I'm very much a dog person. Um, Freddie is like the ultimate girly girl, and we just have the most fun together. As I'm sure you'll have seen from our travel videos, I'd highly recommend watching our Majev vlog, Courcheval, Palm Springs, obviously now Charleston. Um, but yeah, we met through various beauty events at work, and I think it was one particular dinner. It was a, it was a perfume. Um, dinner that was held in Harrods that we both had far too much wine together had such a hilarious evening um, And I think that night just really bonded our friendship and we've been really really good friends ever since then Gosh another question about Freddie and I meeting and the same person has asked how did you and Charlie meet? I think I answered this in a QA and a a couple of years ago um, and many of my long-term subscribers will know that Charlie and I actually met in the Maldives 10 years ago, in fact on the 30th of March this year it'll be our 10 year since meeting anniversary. Um, it's a long story, it's a lovely story, but um, I'll leave our couples tag Q&A which is hilarious and so many of you messaged me saying um, oh my gosh Josie did you realise that your five year plan has come true because in that couples tag video one of the questions is where do you see yourselves in five years and we were both kind of dreaming we were saying oh maybe like a house in the countryside maybe a house in the Cotswolds and look what happened but yeah Charlie and I met in the Maldives ten years ago and this was obviously before we were blogging before to be honest, no one had really heard of the Maldives when we went there. It was a really unusual holiday destination. But yeah, if you like the full story, then I'll leave our couples video down below. This is a very interesting question. Do you have plans to extend the Straw Top Cottage Empire? All I'm gonna say is stay tuned. <laughs> Another funny one. You always talk positively about everything. It makes you the classy girl that you are. Any tips to not curse? I think that's such a funny question. Um, I do use swear words every now and then. I probably don't put them online, firstly because I get demonetized. Um, and I don't think it's a nice trait. I don't think it's, um, it's not a very elegant and ladylike thing to swear, but I do sometimes, especially if I 
bang my knee or if I'm really angry about something. But my tips for not cursing, not swearing, is try not to um, consume content where you hear it a lot. I really noticed this with Charlie. There's a certain um, sport rugby podcast that he listens to and I don't know who the guys are, but they're really loud and they swear so much. Loads of F words, loads of, oh my God, the worst words that I just cringe even hearing them said out loud. And I notice that when he listens to it a lot, he swears a lot more as well. I would say changing what you listen to um, could be quite impactful on your vocabulary. I'm gonna have to change my battery. There we go. This is why I love doing Q and A's. I just would never <laughs> talk about these topics normally. The ultimate facial treatment you'd recommend if you don't have time or money to go regularly. Honestly, Skin and Me. So I worked with them, um, I think back in November or December. I'll leave the video link down below. I think I'm gonna be working with them again this year, which is really exciting. But their product is basically a serum. You fill out an online questionnaire um, about your skin and then you get assigned a dermatologist and you get a skincare routine. Um, you, get, you get ingredients that are specifically formulated for your skin. So I get niacinamide, azelaic acid, salicylic acid in this little tube. Aha! This is in my overnight bag to take to Charlie's parents later. This is my tube. Um, and basically each month you get one of these through the post. It's aluminium, so it's infinitely recyclable. It comes in cardboard packaging through your letterbox. So um, no plastic, which is amazing. The reason it comes every month is because it's active ingredients and each month you get a little bit more so your skin gets used to it. Every day you twist it, you might be able to see dates on here. Each day you twist it um, and you get your dose. I apply this before bed and honestly this product alone <laughs> has made the biggest difference to my skin. But then I do also go to L'Atelier Aesthetics. Um, I get enzyme peels which I think is a really great way of just gradually and regularly resurfacing your skin. But for price and real results, Skin and Me is something that I recommend to so many people. I did have a discount code, hopefully it might still be active. Um, if so, I'll leave it linked down below, but if it's not, then hold on because I should have a new one coming very soon. Gosh, so many questions about our home. I think we need to do a huge home Q&A video. Could you share pictures of your new greenhouse? I've actually got a really big decision I need to make um, over the next couple of days as to whether I have a brick wall in it, sounds a bit weird, or if it's going to be completely glass. So I don't have final plans at the moment. I need to get a few quotes through. Um, let me just tell you, it is so expensive. <laughs> it's such a huge investment, so I really want it to be perfect. Um, but when I do have the final plans, I will of course share them with you. Favorite thing about living in the Cotswolds? Oh my gosh, there is so much. And I did, when I was initially scrolling through, see a question as well that was asking if we regret leaving London and if we miss London. So these can kind of tie in together. I slash we love living here so, so, so much. I could actually get emotional about how much we love living here. My favorite thing about living in the Cotswolds, um, I would say we really do feel like we have the best of everything here. Obviously. People come from all over the worlds to visit worlds. <laughs> Aliens come too. People travel from all over the world to come to the Cotswolds because it is such a beautiful area. We feel so, so fortunate to live here. Um, and when I say that you get the best of everything, we are under an hour from London or door to door, I would say, for me to get to a meeting at say Chilton Firehouse is maybe an hour and a half. Um, which for me is doable because I only go into London a few times a week. Every road that you drive down here is like something from a postcard, something from a movie. It is just the scenery around here is so magical. You also get incredible pubs, incredible restaurants, places like Dalesford, Soho Farmhouse, Quince and Clover, Double Red Duke. We get really good quality food and establishments and places to visit around here and yet you are still in the middle of nowhere. You still get that countryside feel but some of the luxuries that you might miss from living in a city like great food, great fitness classes, great um, massages, body treatments because the Cotswolds is such an amazing destination. A lot of people um, a lot of people have moved to this area and so a lot of businesses come to this area offering really high quality experiences and food and things like that. So I really feel like we get the best of that. 
The people here are amazing and a lot of the people that we have met since moving to the Cotswolds have really got the same kind of priorities in life as us. It's a lot of people that realise that they do like the finer things in life but also realise that you can have all of that without living in a city. So the fact that we're surrounded by like-minded people, I just love being in the countryside, I love being in the fresh air, I love that we can live in a house with a big garden and a lot of space and I love that people love coming to visit us, I love that the Cotswolds is a destination so friends and family will come and spend the weekend with us, even the week with us. Oh my gosh, I could do a whole video on my love for the Cotswolds, but I think you guys see that love coming through in my vlogs. Um, and no, not for one second do we regret leaving London. I think moving out here was the best thing that we have ever done. Is Soho Farmhouse membership worth it? Um, yes, 100% we use it. Charlie's there three or four times a week. I'm there maybe once or twice a week for us. As I said, living out here, for us it's our gym, it's our swimming pool, it's where we go for meetings, the restaurants there, you know, they're not 100% the best, but they're really good. It's a really lovely kind of hub in the Cotswolds, you will always see a familiar face there. The spa, the cowshed spa, the treatments there, um, I definitely think there's room for improvements, I think there are better places to go for treatments in the Cotswolds. But just the whole vibe there, the whole community, for me personally I think it's worth it. My Soho membership is all houses which means I can use any Soho house in the world bar a couple. I think Malibu house and the one that they're opening in the Coachella Valley, they have their own membership which is a bit peculiar, I don't really understand that. Um, but yeah, so because we have that all house membership it means that we can use any Soho house in the world which is great for travelling, also great for days when I've got meetings in London. If you live locally then 100% Soho farmhouse membership is worth it. If you live over an hour away then I would say it is a very bougie monthly expense. When you get your hair coloured, what exactly do you ask for? So I get my hair coloured at Michael Van Clark, Jody does my colour, she's incredible and I would actually say it's better to show something visually on your phone as opposed to using words to describe what you want because I learned that when I was asking for an ashy blonde and a warm toned blonde they actually meant two totally different things. So what you might think means something to a hairdresser who knows the technical terminology they might understand that as something completely different and I think with a picture quite literally is a thousand words um, so I would actually recommend taking a photo rather than trying to describe the colour that you want. Ooh, controversial, would you ever consider buying into Hermes, for example a Kelly or a Birkin? Now I'm quite cautious to answer this because I'm sure there are things in the past where I've said I will never buy that, I will never invest in that and then I have done. In fact I think I did a video that was called 10 luxury items I'll never buy or 10 things which are a waste of money and I'm pretty sure I've probably bought some of the things I've mentioned in that video since filming it. At this moment in time I do not see myself investing, in fact I think a luxury watch <laughs> was probably one of the things in that video. At this moment in time I do not see myself investing in a Birkin or a Kelly, I just think for the amount of money that they are I could get a greenhouse, well not quite, um, <laughs> I could invest that money in other places that would make me a lot happier. Um, I'm also really happy with the handbag collection that I currently have and I feel that if I put that much money into a handbag I'd only ever want to use that handbag for the rest of my life and I quite enjoy mixing and matching maybe one day but at this moment in time I have no plans to um, invest in that. I do have the Oran sandals from Hermes and I do have a silk scarf and for me that's just like a nibble into the brand without, you know, both of those pieces were of course under a thousand pounds and that for me is okay. I feel like I'm getting a little taster of the brand but I don't feel the need to get um, an Hermes or a Birkin but you might be showing me this clip in five years time and I've got a whole collection. Who knows? Never say never. More pets in the future. Um, we often get asked about increasing our sausage squad <laughs> and at the moment I would say no because Dexie and Dickie have just got the most amazing bond, they are the sweetest duo, the brotherly love between them is so heartwarming and I love to see it um, and I would just be very afraid to ruin the dynamic between them, I think having two sausage dogs is the dream. A lot of our friends that have got a sausage we've highly recommended them to get a second and I think that the relationship that they have is truly magical and I really, yeah, I'd kind of be worried that if we bought, to be honest, to be totally honest, I'd be worried that if I bought in another sausage that my little chicken Lynn, my dicky, would be the one that would be ostracised and I just couldn't bear to do that so um, 
No, <laughs> is the answer to that question. Favorite thing to grow? I'm really 50-50 between flowers and vegetables. I love being able to eat what I grow, it's very rewarding, but equally I love bringing blooms into the house. From a floral point of view, cosmos are very rewarding because you get so, so much flower. The more you cut them down to bring them in the house, the more they grow back. I love growing ranunculus. I love how roses look. They're so elegant and so timeless. But then from a veggie point of view, I absolutely, oh, I love growing alliums. I think they're so bold and they make such a statement in your garden. I love growing broad beans, runner beans, um, carrots, spring onion, radishes, probably my favourites because you get so much produce from just a few seeds and I love to eat them. Um, but then I also love growing spinaches, rocket lettuce, they did so well in the garden last year and again, just you can eat so much of it and that feels so rewarding. This is interesting, have you always been interested in being a fashion influencer or was it not the plan? Okay, you have to remember that I've been doing this for nearly 10 years and when I started, fashion influencer was not an expression, being a blogger was not a thing. Um, no one, I believe, that started when I started ever, ever, ever dreamt that this could become a career. My kind of old school generation of bloggers, we all started as a hobby, as a passion and alongside other jobs most of the time and we did not ever imagine that the industry would become what it is today so I absolutely did not go into this with a career plan. I actually do know a few very successful um, in Instagrammers that did leave high-powered careers um, with a goal and a business plan of becoming a successful influencer and they have smashed it, they have done so, you'll see them all over fashion week, I won't name any names but you might be able to guess who I'm talking about. But for me, no, my blog started as a hobby, I have again spoken about this in previous Q&As, um, but it started as a hobby while I was at London College of Fashion, I was talking about the things that I was getting up to during my internships just so I could have like a, a place to track all of that um, and look back on and also send links to fellow students that had questions and it started really organically off the back of that. I would say when I started my YouTube channel, I did have more of an aspiration for it to become a job um, because at that point I had done a few sponsorships on my blog and I wanted to see where it would go with YouTube as well. And that was really when I was able to make this my actual career was when I started my YouTube channel. But yes, to answer the question, no, I have not always been interested in being a fashion influencer. It very much was not the plan. It very much happened naturally. I'm very glad that that was my my route. <laughs> and then the final question, probably the deepest one <laughs> that I'll get into today, um, do you compare yourself to other YouTubers? I mean I'd be lying if I said no because I've always watched other YouTubers content, I love watching other YouTubers. I think it depends on where my mind space is. If, if I'm in a really positive space mentally then I can watch everyone's videos and have no thoughts of comparison, no thoughts of oh I kind of kind of wish that I was working with that brand or I kind of wish my videos looked like that. I would be lying if I said that those feelings didn't sneak in sometimes. I think when you do share so much of your life and so much of your job in such a public way, of course, naturally there are thoughts of comparison, but I think something that I've really learned over the last couple of years is that you are truly happiest when you don't compare yourself to others. And I know that is so, so, so much easier said than done. And I completely understand that. Um, but if you're really happy with what you're doing, just focus on yourself, focus on the content that you're creating, focus on your job, not what your friends are doing, not what your peers are doing, then you're going to be creating the best content because it's something that is truly authentic to you. And I do think that when you're 100% at peace with what you're doing, you're really happy with the work that you're creating, then you can genuinely be really happy for other people. If someone gets a collaboration with a brand that I adore, I'm now at a place where I don't think, oh my gosh, they should have chosen me, or I wish they were working with me. I can genuinely be really thrilled for another content creator, another YouTuber, safe in the knowledge that what I'm doing is right for me. I think that everything happens for a reason. I'm so happy with the content that I'm creating. I'm so happy with my career. Um, and yeah, I just don't feel the need at this <laughs> time in my life to compare myself to others because everyone's journey is completely different. And as long as you love what you're doing, that is all that matters. I would actually say that my YouTube channel started to grow and I felt that my business was becoming more of a success when I really stopped caring what other people were doing, when I really just thought, I'm gonna do what I wanna do, I don't care what other people are doing. And I just did my own thing, I didn't like follow the YouTube 
prescriptive model of what works well. I mean, I know what kind of videos could get me to a million subscribers, but it's not what I want to do, so it's, it's not what I do. Keeping in your own lane, loving what you're doing, don't worry about what other people are doing, that would be... sound. it, it is very much easier said than done, but... It really is true. Anyway, a bit of a deep one to end on, but darlings, I've got to go now because we are heading to Charlie's parents. Um, we're dropping my mum off at the airport. She's going to the Maldives today, which I'm so jealous of, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but darlings, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If there are any burning questions that you have that I didn't get around to asking, feel free to ask in the comments and I will endeavor to answer. But that's all for me for today, darlings. I'll see you in the next one.